Well, thank you for staying with us on NTV tonight. Well, today is the day of the African child, and this year's theme is eliminating harmful practices affecting children. While in nomadic communities, many girls drop out of school due to early marriages. But in Samburu County, Dr. Josephine Kulea has been on a mission to rescue these girls from outdated traditions in addition to helping her community understand the benefits of educating their daughters. So far, she has rescued over 1,000 girls across northern Kenya. Rosongwe was in Samburu County and filed the following report. Our journey to Nkare Narok begins in Wamba, Samburu County. We are on a mission to witness the reunion of a 14-year-old girl whom we shall name Mary in order to protect her identity. Mary was only eight years old when her parents decided she should be married, but she packed enough power to reject her arranged marriage. She ran away from her parents' home in 2017. Luckily, she was rescued by police officers and taken to Samburu Girls Foundation. However, after Mary was rescued, things were tough at home. There was unbearable tension and the bitterness by her family. Five years down the line, Mary is going back home for the first time, working in close collaboration with the local community leadership and children's rights activist Dr. Josephine Kulea. They are here to reintegrate Mary with her family. It was an emotional reunion as Mary saw her mother the first time in five years. Tears in such a case are cherished as they represent forgiveness and a new beginning. She was lucky to be rescued a day before her wedding. And so she did not go through FGM or child marriage. She took longer to reconcile her because she's, the family, as you've seen, live out of connectivity. There is no network here. They are, there is no good road. So we just had to trace them in very difficult situations. She settled in and we even asked her if she wants to go back with us. She's saying no, she wants to stay around. So I think it's good for her because she's going to bond with everyone. Her mother has a promise to keep, a promise that she will not marry off her daughter. I am happy to see my daughter after a long time. I'm also glad to hear she's in school. I'm here to monitor this little girl for all the days she, she will be around. Mary's story is similar to that of hundreds of girls in the county of Samburu. Harmful cultural practices continue to hinder the development of the girl child here. Majority of these girls have found a safe haven at Samburu Girls Foundation. 18-year-old Rosila Lenanyoki was only nine years old when one morning she saw elderly men visit their homestead. The visits were repeated for two weeks in a row. It turned out that the visits were about her. The elderly men were visiting their homestead to arrange her early marriage. I was married to an old man who was almost 50 years old. I was to be the, his third wife. Actually, I was cut on the day of ceremony and the following day I was taken to the man's home. They start sending me to the market to go sell milk in the market. And on my way, I got, uh, I met Dr. Josephine Claire. She took me by force. Um, that was 2011. That was the time I started my education. Back then, the dream of getting an education seemed far-fetched and unrealistic for her. She is happy that it is now a reality that she enjoys. Before I was rescued, I never went to school. I never knew how to speak in English or Swahili. I just knew how to speak in Isamburu. I never wanted to know how to write or something. Actually, I've been topping since uh, primary school, since uh, the first uh, class one. When I finish school, I would like to be a doctor and also help these girls who are still going with the same challenge that I went through. <laughs> When I was rescued, my father was arrested for two years, and from there, when he was released, I was in, by then I was in class two. He came straight to school. He apologized. He cried to me and told me to forgive him since he never knew. He was just following the culture, and I forgave him. And when I closed school, we went to Dr. Justin Claire. We went to our home. They cried, and they they received me happily. 18-year-old Eunice Naisenya was rescued from child marriage in 2011 when she was just seven years old. I was rescued, I was born and 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 born and
This ordeal crushed Nysenia and filled her with deep sadness and grief. She felt betrayed by the people she trusted the most. <laughs> Naisenya completed high school in 2021. Josephine Kulea is someone who works to protect young girls from harmful cultural practices in pastoralist communities in northern Kenya. Looking back, Dr. Kulea's first rescue mission was her cousin, and this paved the way for her dedication to rescuing girls from harmful cultural practices. This encouraged Dr. Kulea even more. She realized that if all girls went to school, things could be different. So she started rescuing girls and at that point was only doing it as an individual and not as an organization. The work I started way back in 2008 uh, the, by rescuing my own relatives, uh, cousins, and uh, when the girls became many in 2011, I decided to register an organization. Samburu Girls Foundation used this land to build a dormitory, dining room, and four classrooms in 2015. That is where they host the girls now. It has become their home. <laughs> Some girls go to boarding school while others attend nearby schools. The foundation provides everything they need from food, shelter to clothes. We've rescued 1,200 girls so far from four, across four counties. When they come in, we take them through almost six months to a year of basic education. Because when you come as an eight-year-old who's not been to school, going to preschool, you, you look much older and it discourages them. But the accelerator program has helped them to catch up with their peers. There is a reconciliation program which takes place in the first or second year after a rescue where the foundation seeks to reconcile the families. We've had girls who stayed here for even five years and more because some parents take longer to, to forgive and just adjust that, that they didn't get this cause from this girl being married off. So it's some parents still carry the, the, the bitterness for long, but eventually they still accept the children because they are their own children. Kulea says that it has been hard taking on the community, especially because it seems like she is against culture, when in fact she is trying to make a positive change. It was difficult because my own uncle mobilized elders to curse me because I, I did something wrong that has never been heard in the community. But eventually, with time, now that we're 10 years down the line, uh, most girls, uh, you know, we have girls whom we took after class eight. They have now graduated, uh, they are working. We have nurses, we have teachers, we have clinical officers. And uh, the community has now appreciated that, oh, she was not spoiling the, 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 the I mean, she was not uh, like uh, killing our culture as they talked, uh, as they say it, but I was helping them to see another different way that if you give a girl a chance to go to school, she can be someone better. So that has helped uh, like many families now not to, to marry off their younger girls or even enroll more girls to school and even FGM has come down. Though not everyone thought this was a great idea in the beginning, parents are seeing their daughters are smart and capable of becoming leaders and the girls themselves understand their worthy, their rights and their potential. All they needed was a chance to find their voices and an opportunity to speak up. Rosuangoi, NTV, in the county of Samburu.